Hello, friends, and welcome to episode number 27 of Nostalgia Talk. And this is a big show. This is a very big show. A lot of you guys have been excited about this for a long time. And today I'm very happy to have with me five of the cast members from the TV series Lazy Town. Woohoo! <laughs> so it's great great to have them them all here because i was a, well not all but the five that are here because i was a big lazy town watcher when i was seven and now i'm 22 and still kind of watching but i'm still seven inside of my head so <laughs> i i never grew up what can i say so um before before i begin i just want to give a little thank you to everyone who attended the nostalgia talk trivia night on facebook and youtube live sorry if it was kind of laggy i'm new at this live stream stuff what can i say because you know, these nostalgia talks are never live but i'm doing my best and if you guys have any suggestions for any other trivia nights let me know because i do want to do more of them and now i'm going to introduce the cast of lazy town one by one so first of all let's give a big welcome to miss bessie busybody Judy Westwood. Everybody, children included. Now we all, Maybe now we all now. have to do the voice. Yeah, I now. know. She set us up for that. <laughs> <laughs> and next up is the mayor of Lazy Town, Milford Meanswell, David Matthew Feldman. Hello. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that yeah, that's the mayor's real voice. Maybe you can get it out of me later. But we'll see. I'm sh I'm sh oh I'm sure. And mm -hmm. also another introduction here for the act the puppeteer who played Trixie during seasons three and four, Amy Garcia. Hi. Woo. <laughs> nice to see you. Nice to meet you. Nice to be on here. So excited. <laughs> and I'm getting my glasses because I'm old. <laughs> I have a feeling that this episode is good. I know we were talking about it before I started recording, but I have a feeling that this episode is going to make a lot of people feel really old. So, <laughs> me. I'm so horrible. Um, next up is the richest kid in Lazy Town. Let's give a big welcome to Jody Eichelberger, who played Stingy. Hello, the richest and most intelligent. Thank you very much. Yeah. That's not much of a contest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. True. Yeah. They the all have very small brains. For the record, Stingy, if you are there, this podcast is mine, okay? <laughs> <laughs> we'll see about that. <laughs> and last but not least, one of the most popular cast members from Lazy Town, of course, Milford's niece is here as well. Let's give a big welcome to Chloe Lang, who played Stephanie during seasons three and four. Welcome. Thank you. Hello. I'm happy to be on here. And it's so good to see everyone. Yeah. Well, David David actually is the one who helped me plan all of this. And I was talking to him the other day and he said, it'll be like a little reunion for all of us. So let me just say from the bottom of my heart, how happy I am to be a part of that. Aww. Aww. So sweet. Thank you for bringing us together. We could have done it before, but we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> we could have, but we didn't. Yeah, we did. <laughs> had years to do this, and we just couldn't. We just didn't. Yeah. We just I, I, I never show up unless there's an audience. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this podcast was recorded in front of a live studio audience. No, it isn't. We're on lockdown. Uh, <laughs> yeah. All right. So first of all, thank you guys so much for uh, for coming. You're welcome. Yes, thank you for having us. No problem. Yeah, thank you. Great. So, first question I have here. Some of the, some of these questions I have for all of you. Some for one. Some for a group. So let's start with one for Jody, Amy, David, and Julie. What were some of your biggest influences in puppetry? Jim Henson. Jim Henson. Jim Henson. Yeah, Jim Henson. <laughs> yeah, Jim Henson. Yeah, Jim Henson. Sure. Same. Yeah, Jim was Same, I think across the board. Yeah, yeah, Jim was absolutely legendary. And David, I did see a picture online of you with Jim Henson. Uh can you talk a little bit about what he was like? Where did you see that picture? It was on Facebook. <laughs> Photoshop. Oh, you photoshopped it. No, that was me. That was me uh at um like twelve or thirteen. I got I, I met him. I mean, it was a very brief encounter. I, I, you know, it uh, was obviously a very uh, 
important uh, moment in my life. But it was it was brief. He was very nice. I'm glad I got to meet him before he left us. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean that he's the reason. I, I don't think if he if he never did what he did, I don't know if any of us would be doing what we're doing. Yeah, it was the Muppets, seeing the Muppets well, on a Sunday afternoon. That's just not the Muppets. Just want to do that. Mm -hmm. I actually wrote him a letter when I was a sophomore in high school, um, saying that asking how I could be part of the Rainbow Connection uh, to be, you know, I had to like use the metaphor, I guess. And one of the most thrilling thing that's ever happened to me was getting a letter back in response. And he didn't offer me a job in that letter, uh, <laughs> but uh, it did encourage me to keep working in the profession and try to. I love that. I invited him to my bar mitzvah. Oh, and that's really? a response. Yeah. Wow. He sent back his response card. What did he say? No. <laughs> <laughs> He said he was going to be out of the country. I still have it. Wow. It I, I'd love yeah. to see that sometime. So uh, sp since we're talking about the Muppets and Jim Henson, uh, Jody, you were credited in the film Adventures of Elmo and Grouchland, which came out when I was just about six months old, but I still love it. Uh, when, you, <laughs> when you worked on that film, did you get to work with people like Frank Oz and Carol Spinney, Fran Brill, Jerry Nelson, all the legends? Um, so it was a mixture. So Frank Oz never showed up on set. Um, I understand he did do voiceover later. I'm not sure he, he may have done some puppetry, but the Bert and Ernie sequences were not filmed on our set. They were filmed later uh, in a studio. Um, but uh, Jerry Nelson was there. He gave everybody watches, which I have still. It was wonderful. Um, Fran was there. Uh, Carol Spinney did some of this stuff. In fact, I at one point got to be a bird wrangler, which basically just meant that I stood next to the ramp and just walked with him in case he took a misstep. He could land on me instead of on the floor. And uh, a feather actually fell off during that scene. And I very discreetly reached over and grabbed the yellow feather and <laughs> stuck it in my pocket. And... <laughs> And now I have it in a scrapbook. Oh. This <laughs> and I also have some mine. cookie monster fluff. <laughs> yep, yep. That's quite a keepsake yeah. there. Yeah, so, wow. uh, yeah, I geeked out for sure uh, when the original cast showed up. I mean, the new cast I didn't really know at the time. I got to know them. Uh, but when the original cast came out, I kind of ceased to be a performer and became like a total fan and just sort of stood there and gawked for a while. Um, but it was, yeah, it was very exciting to, to see those that were participating in the film. So when you say uh, cast, do you mean like the human cast? Um, and also the puppeteers who had come okay. in sort of next generation, like Matt and um, who, David and, uh, the, you know, they're the, they're the main crew now, but then they, I think they were still fairly new. Right. And the human cast, like I freaked out when Maria showed up because she was my Maria and Susan. Um, Gordon was a new Gordon. He wasn't my Gordon. And I didn't know the character who's like a preschool teacher. Gina. Uh, I didn't know her. She was Gina. Yeah, she was added later. So I kind of ignored her and then like fanned over the other people. <laughs> hmm. Me right now with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to step out for a second and I'll join you again in a few minutes. Sounds good. So, David, I understand that when you auditioned for uh, Lazy Town, you auditioned for basically every one of the puppet characters. Was there a certain one that you thought, oh, this is the one that I want? Yes. Uh, Stephanie. I want to, I want to do this. Um, I, I don't know if it was, it was what I wanted, but I definitely felt that the mayor made the most sense for me. Okay. Um, I think that it's a very hard thing to do for, uh, and you see it, it, it with animation, um, you see it with puppets, for adults to play kids, to play kid characters. I think it's a very tricky thing to do. And, and, and I think our show, we were very lucky because we got a bunch of puppeteers who could really do that um, in a way, because what happens is I feel all the time is like, Adults, you know, you're an adult and you're playing a kid. So it's kind of like, 
you're punching down, you know, you, um, you, you're in this power position. So how do you, how do you sort of make this a funny character but not belittle the character? I think it's a very tricky thing to do and it's something that I've never really felt totally comfortable with. Um, but I am comfortable with playing adults who, who act like kids. So the mayor made, it was more intuitive for me, I think. So it wasn't quite, I, I, I went in there really wanting the mayor, but when they called back for the mayor, that, that made sense. In fact, they didn't even have to tell me who I was coming back for. I just knew that it was, it was the mayor. Okay, nice. Yeah. So Chloe and Amy, you two joined the show uh, when it was rebooted back in 2013. I, I, th that was a little bit after my time watching Lazy Town, but heck, I still watched it. It was, yeah. so, um, so um, how did you two get involved? Like, uh, did you hear about an audition for it? Well, I'll start. Chloe, did you want to? Yes, you can go ahead. Sure. So, um, so yeah, I, I found out the Lazy Town audition through my uh, manager at the time. Um, so I came actually into New York City to audition and Magnus and the producer and uh, like a couple other people were in the room, the casting directors. And um, yeah, the process was really funny. I had to come prepared with um, a song and dance and like the bing bing dance they wanted me to like know that and perform it for the audition um, and I had a bunch of lines and I like remember rehearsing the script and like I had lines with like Stingy and Trixie in like the audition room um, it was really funny it was a really cool experience but I actually went back my call back the very next morning because I was not prepared with my bing bang dance and Agnes was like oh we really want to see that so if you go home and learn it and come back tomorrow so that was kind of really fun, funny for me. And um, yeah, the process like happened really fast. And like, I'd say like two weeks after that, I think, I think I'd gotten the call that I would be like moving to Iceland basically. So it happened really fast. Um, but, but once, once I got there, like the, the flow between the um, season one and two cast and then like, I feel like me coming in and, and Amy too, it was so smooth and happened like so naturally for me at least. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I agree. The flow, the flow was very, very smooth. I mean, it was already, it was just sort of like fitting into a machine that was already in motion. At, at least that's, that's what it felt like for me. It was already, you know, they had, and I had also come in replacing, I think, two prior Trixies, if I'm correct. I, um, three. So three. It was three. Whoa. Right, Julie? Julie, wasn't it? I think it was three. Heather and Sarah. And Amanda had had a crack at it too. Remember? Oh, right, right. Yeah, yeah. forgot Amanda. Yeah, so that it had been it had been so it wasn't like I think the only daunting task was sort of like okay, so then what out of the three that have just been here do you want me to continue doing? It was kind of like trying to find my own way, but still honoring what was set up in the past so you know because when you're taking over something it's not like you can you know you don't you you, you can't just kind of come in and do your own thing right you can't do that you have to like you have to honor what's already been established so there was there was an, an element of that and also kind of like well am i allowed to try new things like um but everybody was super duper supportive and and the atmosphere was super fun we were i mean like and i don't know if we've if you if we've started talking about the puppets on that show but like holy moly those were those were we were athletes i don't know if anybody told you that but on top of being puppeteers those Wait, were some yeah, those were some very interesting, uh, they're beautiful puppets, uh, but yeah, you, you had to, there were, there were some were a little more difficult than others for sure. Yeah, Julie and, and Matt, oh, holy, holy, my David and, and Julie like had the biggest puppets and were underneath those puppets and, and, I mean, I don't, I, I wish we could have like more, you know, behind the scenes footage of just how massive those things were. I mean, I don't know how many times I even lifted it myself because though I was a little nugget and those things were <laughs> really heavy for me at the time. They were almost as big as you, right? I, I mean, know, like, they were huge. They were like, Do you remember, um, 
you, you, you two talk about coming in and, and sort of, you know, fitting into this machine. I remember, um, I think it was the first day that both of you were shooting, that we were shooting the first day of that season. We were doing this very big scene, or at least it was the first day that I was shooting with you, Chloe. We were doing this very big scene in the mayor's office and it was Iggy's birthday party, right? So all the characters were in there and you were up standing up on the platform, Chloe. That was my first time and, I was stressing. Yeah, <laughs> and we fall. were all we were all down on the standing on the floor with our puppets, and you. Um, it struck me. Here, here's why this. Well, I'll tell you what you did, but and then I'll tell you why it kind of struck me. You um, were looking around at all of us, and you were like, "What?" You know, looking at the puppets. What is that? What does that feel like? What? How heavy is that? Can I see? Can I try? And, and you were asking to like try them all on and you're standing there with oh my gosh you were literally like a kid in a candy store like playing around and it struck me because um you and Juliana were two very different people yeah. and Juliana I think was a little bit older than you when she started right um and Juliana is just very focused um not, not that you weren't focused but Juliana's kind of like an old soul like very professional you know and you were like a kid oh. you were like I want to play with that I want to do this I want to do that and you were just throwing the puppets around and and trying everything out and it was very endearing yeah so did uh, did you get any advice on how to take on uh Stephanie from anyone anyone else who was working on the show um I think I think the nice thing was kind of like what Amy said um, I definitely did my, my research on, on being able to honor, like just knowing that who the Stephanie character was already established to be able to honor that, but also bring, bring a little bit of myself. And season three and four is when, um, the, the mask, like the superhero mask was introduced to Stephanie, which was, um, not at all in seasons one and two. And it was also a little different. I had like the breakdowns. I don't know if you guys remember, I was doing those breakdowns every episode. So there was like some small difference. <laughs> yeah, the breaking down. So there was some small differences. Um, I know that none of the felt... listeners can see it, but Jody was just doing a little dance right there. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't yeah, that dance. little. That was pretty major, I have to say. Yeah. <laughs> You're the next John Travolta. <laughs> uh, but yeah, other other than just like watching previous episodes to really understand like what I needed to bring as far as like energy and attitude um, for the character. Um, I was kind of able to to like learn and figure out the process on my own. Um, also, I, th I think Stephanie at the time, especially I've gotten older now, but when I was 10 years old, I had a lot in common with Stephanie. Um, you know, just like the dancing, the energy, the singing, like it was just kind of who I was. So um, I, like I said, it came really naturally. Nice. I did some digging getting ready for this, and I found an old photo from my childhood watching Lazy Town. Do you guys want to see it? Yes. <laughs> yes, please. So my family, we went to, uh, oh, who's messaging me? Sorry, pe people have been texting me. Uh, anyway, so um, we found, I don't remember where the heck it was, but uh, costumes of Sporticus and Stephanie. So this is a photo of me as a seven-year-old dressed as Sporticus and my sister, who was five, as Stephanie. Oh my gosh, that is so freaking cute. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> that is too funny. I actually have something to show you guys. Do you want to see the shirt I'm wearing? Really? Yes. Sure. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so cute. I found it in my jar a couple weeks ago when I was going through my clothes for like the spring. And I was like, I, I need to wear this. <laughs> you can't see it, but yeah. I am currently wearing Stingy's shorts. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't show that. I'm wearing the mayor's underwear. <laughs> I don't fit into any of Trixie's things because I'm a large lady. <laughs> So Chloe, I gotta ask you. I I, I, I went, even have a hair. Script. I know. Sorry. It's all right. I gotta ask you. Uh, I went back and rewatched a bunch of Lazy Town episodes, uh, both from the original, from when I was in single digits, and from the reboot, from when I was a teenager. And uh, I noticed that the, that when Sporticus and Stephanie come into the scene right at the opening, they do a little bit of a flip in. Was that you actually doing a flip? So. Um... 
I, I am able to like, I, I am a real dancer and like gymnast, but I remember actually on the first day of set, I was a little confused. I was like, wait, I'm not going to be the one doing all these flips. So they actually had girls my age would come in and be my stunt double only because, um, you know, like if I get hurt and we can't film, that is bad news. So it was just easier um, to make sure that I wasn't like doing all these crazy flips. But a lot of the, the um, I feel like those were the only stunt doubles that I had. I did a lot of like the fly moves and stuff myself. Those were really fun. But yeah, the, that intro flip is not me. Okay. I, I, I was going to say that if it was, that's pretty incredible. <laughs> it was me, actually. <laughs> I do actually remember, um, and I, 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 this was one of the episodes I was re-watching uh, this week, but I remember there was an episode where the mayor was in this tree doing all of Miss Busybody's work while she was napping, I believe it was. And um, uh, he was trying to get rid of a bee, but he slipped and fell out of the tree and he didn't have a ladder there because stingy decided that the ladder was his it actually was my father's <laughs> which actually when i watched that it made me believe that the mayor was stingy's father oh. <laughs> well there is a <laughs> you know, no I've, got, I've got about five minutes left on my battery Oh, that's okay. So I'll be sort of heading out fairly soon. Oh, get your Bessie questions in now. Okay. Um, any, any Bessie questions? <laughs> okay. Um, just, uh, uh, well, there's some for everyone here. Um, how much of what was done on the show was done in front of a green screen as opposed to an actual set? Like, what percentage would you say? Because I noticed that a lot of the outdoor things were done on a green screen. Oh, don't give Julie a math question. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but it wasn't much. It was about five percent green screen. It wasn't much a green screen. No, it was, was it? way more than that. Do I remember? The, the only real hard sets were the, um, you know, the, the indoor it's sets. It's like, like ninety-three percent green screen. Yeah. <laughs> the fire was real, but no, it wasn't it? Because even when we were outside doing things, we were on carts and things, so they had the sort of uh, the set, yeah. the solid set. Most of the thing was green screen. The background was all green screen. Yeah. Uh, there the would be like. Oh, no, 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 no. Stop doing That's that after the first oh. week. Remember that nightmare? Yeah. There would be like a, a whole outdoor green screen, and then they would put like one real tree. Like that's right. it, right? Okay. Yeah. There's like some like, fake real trees, I should say. Okay. Fake right. real trees. So while we were still on cars, we were all on yeah. cars. Yeah, we spent years on our backs uh, rolling around on cart. The oldest yeah. profession in the world. <laughs> yes. Mm. So uh, do any of you guys actually wish that the animated houses that were in the background were real? Like, I, I know that the interior was like a set, but for example, like Stingy's house that we could see on the animated stuff, it, had, it looked like a piggy bank, I believe. Do you guys ever wish that those houses were real? I actually just wish Trixie had a house. Yeah, that's right. I always I, I noticed that. <laughs> I mean, Stephanie's bedroom was pretty cute. I'll, I'll give it. I'll give it to her. It was cute. I would take it. I definitely wish um, the star, the star spaceship. I mean, I was going to say starship. Sportacus is spaceship. I wish that was like a real, not just like a, a half set thing. You know, mm. that was cool. Yeah. That would, that would be, be a really cool. Lazy cool Town would not be a very practical place to live because, um, you know, there are no straight lines in Lazy Town. That's sort of the design aesthetic. Um, so we would have problems like the mayor's desk in his office was, you know, was the, the top of it was curved. It was, you know, it was like this kind of thing. So we would, you know, put a pen on it and just watch it roll off. Um, the desk. Yeah, but no, it wouldn't. It would roll off because the pen was, well, the pen was like a banana. Right. Nothing was practical. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Nothing rolls. Mm. It's funny. So did doing Lazy Town in Iceland feel differently from working where you're used to? Like, for example, if you were to do a project in LA and or anywhere in the States and then you would be doing it in, in Iceland, like, did, 
did a yeah, few Yeah, there's no days. health and safety in Iceland. Four hours. It didn't seem to be. People would work when we had to finish a, um, an episode. We'd be there till four in the morning. Oh, yikes. You wouldn't get that. You wouldn't get that in LA or UK or anywhere. Yikes. So, um, the yeah. amount of space. I mean, we had so much room, which really was very different from, you know, like working in, in New York, at least. Uh, and also just our studio, you know, we had a cafeteria with a chef, we had a gym, we had a sauna, we had... Yeah, we were really... We had a gym? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, David was never in the gym, except for his son. And then, even, and then it doesn't matter if you weren't in the gym, because sometimes halfway through the day, Magnus would say, right, everybody, up you get, we're all going and down the building. So everyone would get up and run out. Not me. Yeah. Who would do that? No, I, I, hide. I will say, <laughs> I, I, for me, I, um, no, you go, you go. I, I was going to say that uh, for with, with the gym being there, I have a feeling Robbie Rotten wouldn't be spending too much time there. <laughs> uh, no, he was not in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but for me, um, like filming Lazy Town versus anything else I've ever worked on, like this was like a full, like whole life experience. So like me and my mom, uh, like I had to unenroll from school in just fifth grade and be like, homeschooled on set uh, me and my mom like we left our family I mean like we all kind of had to do that and we we're just living in Iceland I was so young I just kind of I don't know I was so excited um, but it was definitely different it is if I was working on a, a film or TV show that was filming in New York um, I would probably still be in school still seeing my friends and family versus being living in this amazing country, um, getting to travel from there um, and seeing these like awesome landscapes and stuff. I don't think it would have happened with any other, any other production and that, other than Lazy And that's Town. part of why we really, I feel like we became a lot closer as a cast um, than we would have because it wasn't just shooting at the studio. Um, we were with each other on the weekends, hiking, yeah. visiting sites in the country, playing zombie. Game. What was that zombie game? Yeah. Zombicide. 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 I must say now, I'm I'm now one percent battery. So at this at some point, I will just disappear. All right. All right. Well, Julie, thank you very much for 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 coming. It's it's a pleasure. Good luck with the restaurant. Seeing everybody. Yeah, love you. Seeing everybody. Best of luck with the pub. Yeah. Have have a good time. <laughs> For any of the listeners who are love you. Bye. For any of the listeners who are not aware, uh, Julie's son is opening up a pub, and so she's kind of at the opening, and she kind of showed us around. So now it's just me, Amy, Jody, David, and Chloe. So I'll uh, I'll just uh, keep going. Uh, Chloe, you were saying something. Uh, I think I've been. I don't even remember what I was saying. Oh yeah, we were just saying how we were like all one big family kind of just because we were living and like exploring this other country together on and off set. And by the way, you need to call David Davey so that he matches the rest of us. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> then, Amy, Jody, yeah, then I, well, then I'd have to call myself Jamesy or Jimmy and that's not Jimmy on my Jimmy works. Well, people, Jimmy people, works. people used to come up to me in high school and call me Jimmy and I'm like, I'm sorry, Jimmy's not on my birth certificate. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, I, I hated being called Jimmy. I still I still don't like it. <laughs> mm. uh, but yeah, um, you know, we we didn't have, you know, family and friends to go home to at the end of the day. We just had each other. So, you know, we had, you know, we would, work, you know, work really never ended in a sense. We would go and we would have dinner together. We'd go to the movies. We'd spend the weekends together. Um, so it was a very unique experience mm -hmm. in that sense. And I think there's a connection between the, all of us that is probably unlike any other show that any of us have worked on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, nice. Uh, Amy, did it feel any different for you? Oh, no, I mean, I'm in total agreement with them as well. I, you know, mm -hmm. and, and I think 
also just, you know, navigating for us, a, a lot of us, you know, lived in the, I think Julie was the only one from, uh, from maybe a, a close enough time zone to be able to communicate, uh, uh, you know, with their family. But I mean, we were, we were kind of working against five hour, eight hour, you know, nine hour, 10 hour time differences just to try to be able to like, you know, have any kind of family time at all. So, you know, we, we became each other's families. Um, and, and I loved though too, like with as much as we explored, like Iceland really isn't that big of a country. Like you could mm. pretty much see the entire country. Like, you know, after the first month we're like, Oh man, what do we do now? <laughs> you know, like oh, you you've seen all the biggest hotspots, so you had to we had to like kind of get creative with like where we were going and what we were doing. Like it, we we I, I know for myself, I got a lot more adventurous in Iceland. You know, completely out of my comfort zone um, in regards to being out in nature and you know being in a country where I didn't speak the language. Like, but being surrounded with other people who were experiencing that alongside with me was was awesome was just you know we were all kind of like fish out of water and it was it was uh, it, it just added to the whole bonding experience so it was it was very cool yeah. nice so i did <laughs> notice that for uh, some of the, for the uk uh, versions of lazy town that the voices for some of the puppet characters like ziggy and trixie and stingy was dubbed i see jody doing making the thumbs down uh do you guys know why that was yeah um, they just had, from the very beginning, they had this, I don't know who was doing it, I guess it was the BBC, had this policy that they would just dub American voices into British accents, which is kind of silly because it's the same language. You know, my right. kids watch Peppa Pig, which is British. Um, but um, what, what happened was they... I remember being contacted about auditioning for the British version of the mayor's voice. And I thought, okay. And so I tried out a version of, of what I thought was a version of what I was doing, but with a British accent. And it sounded exactly the same. <laughs> so I got on the phone with them and I said, it's not gonna be any different he kind of already has a little bit of a British, you know, lilt to his voice. Like, and, and, you know, and they said, and I said, you know, Bessie's British. I mean, she's going to, you know, change her voice. And they said, all right, we'll leave um, the mayor and Bessie alone and we'll just dub the kids. Um, and they actually asked me also to uh, possibly do stingy in British accent. Um, and I talked to them a few times, but the schedule, it was clear they didn't really want this to happen because the schedule that they outlined was like, I would come in and do five episodes over a period of two weeks or something, and then go away and then come back again to do the next five and go away. But, and the budget they had would have made that impossible because they couldn't, they weren't going to pay for the flights. And, you know, it was just, um, you know, not good, not economically I, I wouldn't have, I would have lost money by trying to go in and do the voice. Um, I was lucky though because uh, Sarah Burgess who was Amy's predecessor on Trixie uh, and is British uh, she actually went in and uh, she auditioned for Trixie and Stingy and she did the voice of Trixie in, a, in some episodes and she didn't get that part but she did get Stingy so uh, that made me kind of more happy because she at least was on set during those episodes and also knew me really well and knew the character really well, better than you know an, a random voice actor would have. Um, so although I have to say, listening to some of the international productions, it, some of them, it is spooky how good they are. Uh, you know, it's like, I feel like I'm hearing myself speaking Bulgarian. It's just <laughs> insane. <laughs> I see. So what are some of your favorite Lazy Town episodes? Mm. <laughs> so hard. I really liked um, the museum one. Me like I, I really liked, or, or the, la the very last one we did for season four, uh, The Pyramid. I yes. It was just because the sets were so fun. Oh, I think going to the moon. 
I don't uh, know. Going to the moon. Oh, cool. yeah. That was really that neat. Was so, that was really cool. Yeah. And I really liked the song for that episode, too. It's like yeah. very like pop, pop vibes. Mm. Yeah. The yeah, music for Lazy Town, man. Like, so good. They, oh, so good. Right? Like, yeah, every time we'd go in to record, I'd be like, this is a bop. This is know. great. You know, like, it was Actually, always fun to go in and just sing. It was, yeah. yeah. And the mm. dances always always hit too. Yeah. Yeah, mm. it was good stuff. But I actually remember the moon episode. I think I think the reason why that one might not be my favorite favorite ever is because do you guys remember how like claustrophobic I was in the costume? Oh yeah, like, yeah. Like remember me crying on set? <laughs> like they had me in the bubble, in the wig, in the lights. And like the in the suit, and I was just like, I can't do it. <laughs> I was just like, it's like just breathe, but... just breathe, just breathe. You got this. Just breathe, just breathe. And then Hannah, I was trying to like brush my bangs under the tube. I'm like, like I'm so sorry. <laughs> hmm. well, who 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 would have ever imagined that some of the songs from Lazy Town would end up becoming internet memes? Oh right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah like i i remember um for we are number one for example which is of course the most popular like for example would be we are number one but the word one would be replaced by something from b movie so for example it would sound like we are number you like jazz <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't really understand the connection with that i remember when the we are number one memes were going crazy on twitter mm-hmm. that was like a show mm-hmm. that was crazy somebody was playing them at my high school and i was like what on earth are you watching i recognize the voice that sounds like that sounds like robbie rotten from lazy town they said, <laughs> yes it is and i was like well why well why is there like b-movie stuff all around here I, do, I don't get it i did not understand any of that yeah yeah and and you don't know which ones are gonna you know pop like that which ones are gonna take on a life of their own because there would that that was just another episode that we shot we didn't think mm-hmm. twice about it you know mm-hmm. And like in the in the in the first season, I think it was cooking the, by the, the cooking the yeah. cake. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, that was just another Lazy Town song. Like, why that one? You know, why and we are still, number one? Um, I'm sure it had a lot to do with Yeah, still on social media, like on my social media to this day, I'm constantly getting like cooking by the book comments, and I'm like, that wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> or like, or also people really like the we are a pirate. From oh, the first yes. couple of yeah. <laughs> I remember that from my childhood. Yeah. Yeah. One of my favorite episodes. Well, we have to give a shout out to Mounties. Uh, yeah. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Mounties a genius. Mm. Yeah. Round of applause. Seriously. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> one one of one of my favorite episodes uh of uh of Lazy Town was um I, uh, but uh, both of them actually involved the mayor, Dave, uh, in a pretty big in a pretty big role. So one of them was um, the mayor was giving out an award, and everyone's like, "Who's the award for?" And he's crumbling under the pressure not to say that it's for Sporticus. And then Sporticus sees the award, and he's like, "That's a big trophy. Who's it for?" And the mayor's like, "Come on, keep it in, keep it in, keep it in." He's trying so hard to keep his mouth shut, and at that same time, Robbie Rotten, like always, is trying to stop Sporticus from doing anything so he decides to combine all of his uh tricks together and uh, i i i don't really understand this part but his the disguise that he chose was a cow yet the prank had absolutely nothing to do with cows there was sort of a a a, a, a backwards logic to a lot of the lazy town <laughs> scripts where i i think it was a there were always a way to get to that visual you know like you want to see robbie rotten in a cow suit so let's work backwards from yes, there. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um you know i did i i this is sort of an infamous story um that magnus loves to talk about we did a, a show where um the mayor dressed up as a pink bunny rabbit and in this big giant pink bunny rabbit costume um that that almost killed me basically Ooh. because it was it was so big and 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 heavy and i had to do all these strenuous things with it um but th- there was no good reason why he was in a pink bunny rabbit costume it was just a funny visual 
Mm-hmm. And I think that was a lot of lazy town. Like, how do we, how do we just get these funny looking moments? You know, right. that was true. Mm. The other one I really loved was um, where Robbie's prank this time to make everyone to make sure that lazy town is known as lazy town for a reason was where he sprinkled spots over everything and created this disease that was caused by eating fruits and vegetables. And two of the rules were Sporticus must leave lazy town forever and do nothing and eat junk food. And everyone believes that. (laughs) Robin is so funny on the show. Yeah. I mean, you know, we should definitely talk about Stefan, I think. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, I've got I've got uh, something in here about it. But before we get to that, uh, can I tell you guys a funny little story? Yeah. Sure. So um, with uh, this goes along the lines of the do nothing and um, eat junk food thing. But around that time, I was close to the last day of school for me. I was in grade two. I was leaving grade two rather. And we had a new principal who came over the PA and he said, OK, here are the three rules for summer. Rule number one, be kind leave your room a mess and eat junk food. And I remember saying to my mom, we have to do that now because our principal told us to. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like with Lazy Town, you know, you have to do that because the mayor told you to <laughs> under the doctor's <laughs> orders. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How do you think that Lazy Town would be affected by the COVID-19 pandemic? Because everyone's always out and playing and then you have Robbie trying to make sure it's known as Lazy Town for a reason. How do you think that everything would be happening now? Oh, Robbie Rotten would love this. He would <laughs> love the pandemic. He would find ways to continue the spread. Oh, I mean, God. come on, right? Am I like, it's, right? <laughs> Probably, yeah. yes. That's something I, I mean, was thinking. Like, oh yeah. I don't know. I I can't picture Lazy Town like filled with a full society. Like it's just us. Yeah. Like, <laughs> oh yeah. I don't. I can't picture it like like taking on a pandemic i don't know <laughs> yeah well it would be very easy to quarantine because there's only like six people in the whole town right i wouldn't have anywhere to go Trixie doesn't have a house <laughs> where would she quarantine you can stay with me i have a nice bedroom we'd be our own bubble chloe we'd be our own bubble <laughs> <laughs> right you know so who else is um 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 oh my gosh ron's character pixel pixel yeah. Why did I blank on that? All those computers never get bored in there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was cool. I remember um, there was one episode where um, it was everyone was playing soccer and I remember watching that with my friend Rachel. Rachel was my very first friend. We She lived across the street from me and we loved Lazy Town. Rachel, if you're listening, yes, I'm doing this to intentionally make you feel old like always. We loved that show when she was nine and I was seven. And I remember watching an episode with her where everyone was playing soccer, but the only one not there was Pixel. And so we had this theory that Pixel was sick that day and was being babysat by Robbie Rotten. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Which would be the worst thing anyone in the world could ever imagine. <laughs> or, or the best thing. I don't know. Yeah. Well, maybe it would have been the only option. Who knows? Um, but, uh, since we're talking about, uh, Robbie Rotten, I feel like it would be really hard to have a talk about Lazy Town in the year 2021 without bringing up the one and only Stefan Carl Stephenson. And for any of the listeners who don't know who that is, unless you saw that dedication at the first few seconds, Stefan Carl Stephenson is best known for Lazy Town's villain, Robbie Rotten. And he passed away a few years ago as a result of cancer. I will never forget that day. Do you guys have any memories of uh, Stefan Carl that you'd like to share? Oh my gosh, yeah. I I was, I mean, coming in as a, as a newbie and meeting him for the first time, like I had watched his work prior, but like getting to watch him perform take after take after take, I was always so impressed at how, like what, he, what a genius he was on every single take he would give so many different options for the same beat and I was just so enthralled by him and always just it was always such a pleasure to be able to to watch him work because he was so creative he was literally the Icelandic Jim Carrey to me I mean he was just Mm. he was so he, he he would he was able just to like just to flip and he was just so quick and his ability to you know to to 
uh, for me, I was just always impressed. I know that whatever Icelandic people, you know, as adults all speak English, but his ability to be able to communicate in both languages was oh, flawless. He, yeah. and, and to understand comedy in those beats for both languages was, he was a master. And, um, and remember so he had, you know, we all had very, fairly simple lines. Like, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, like, yeah, guys, let's go, whatever. Stefan would have these arias, you know, I mean, you look at the script and it would be like, like this thick, you know, this, this mm -hmm. monologue and he would memorize it perfectly. And, mm -hmm. and if we were working with him and wanted to try something different or give him a different line or something, he just, it was like, it was like, there was no problem at all. He just, he adapted perfectly and beautifully and welcome to that too, because he loved performing and he loved performing with us you know mm -hmm. he, he relished being a performer which means interacting with people and so you know whenever we got the chance to work with him he he just he he relished it I remember we did this one thing where the scene was written it was a phone call between the mayor and Robbie and it, it was like a split screen kind of thing and he came and we I ended up shooting my side of it one day and he shot his side of it the other day and he came to me later and he said he was really hoping that we could do it together you know um because he just loved being on that set and and performing with us I mean mm -hmm. that was his that was his thing but it, it really should be said that as as talented as he was he was even a better person mm -hmm. You know, his, his, his generosity exceeded his, his talent, mm -hmm. if that was even possible. I mean, he was such a sweet, lovely guy who really cared about people. I mean, he opened his home to us. He knew that we were all, you know, strangers in a strange land, particularly in the beginning. And he just, you know, we had dinner at his home. We got to know Shana. We got to know his kids. Yeah. He, he really kept an eye out for us because he cared. Yeah, really and, and when I um, when I think of Robbie and Stefan, that's that's kind of what immediately what I think of because he had daughters that were around my age, so he you know he kind of understood that I was like this young girl uh, working in a country that me and my mom had never really been to, um, and he was so generous, so kind, and just so down to earth, and him and his family were so welcoming. Um, I just remember like making so many good memories, like him always inviting us to his house for dinner and stuff like that and showing us his garden. And, um, you know, I still talk to his kids to this day. You know, we have social oh, that's media, lovely. which is an amazing thing um, for reasons like this. Yeah, we're still in touch. And um, it's awesome that when I get, when I'm able to go back and visit Iceland, um, which I like to do often, obviously without COVID, um, yeah, I meet up with them and, and hang out with them, which is an amazing thing. And I, I also remember, um, you know, like Stefan on set, he was just always, it wasn't about, it wasn't about getting it done or, or like, you know, he was never like in a bad mood. Like he was always making everyone on set laugh. And he was always like, just so passionate about what he was doing. And like David was saying, just like loved working with us and like, hey, should we try this for fun? Like, you know, just always kind of having a really good time with it. And he loved his character and just like, it was so cool to watch watch him kind of like become his character on set. And also um, since I had to be in hair and makeup for a while every day, I thought I had it bad because I had to like do the wig and it took me a couple hours to get ready. No, he was in the chair getting getting the eyebrows and the chin and, and even the hair like glued on him every morning for like four hours. Um, and we were just in the same makeup room, like sitting in the chairs next to each other, like, what's up? So um, it was, he was just like the best guy all around between his talent and just who he was as a person. It's <laughs> lovely. Uh, Jody, do you have any uh, Stefan Carl Stephenson memories that you'd like to share? Well, it's interesting because Stefan, uh, he and I toured together um, with the Lazy Town live show that was at Sesame Place a few times. Um, and there was, he's changed the way I interact with 
Lazy Town fans, frankly, because he invited someone to come backstage at that tour. And at the time, I was like, Stefan, what are you doing? I was like, is this, you're being a crazy Icelandic person who just thinks like everybody is welcome to go anywhere and you're inviting these people and I don't want to talk to them backstage. And I was being a little bit of a diva, I guess, um, which is not entirely out of character, but- uh, Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, but that guy, that guy is, um, you know, I met him and he um, happens to be a person who is autistic. Um, and after Stefan passed, uh, that guy contacted me and he was clearly heartbroken and suffering and going through a lot of grief. And, you know, my first reaction is like, oh, do I really need to message this person and stay in contact with this person? And, and part of it in thinking about Stefan and how generous he was with everybody, cast, crew, uh, fans, uh, it really affected me. And, and I told myself, you know what? Yes, you can write this person and acknowledge their pain and, and process it with them. And I mean, it's just a Facebook message. It's not like I'm sending him plane tickets or anything. Um, but uh, that's because of him. That's because of Stefan that he, you know, that he made me a more generous, caring person um, in this very specific way. It's beautiful, it's lovely. Another thing about Stefan, um, there, I think one of the th things that we were very lucky about was that, he, you know, the, these sort of moments with Stefan that didn't necessarily make it to the show, these little moments of genius that we just would happen to sort of catch out of like the corner of our eyes, you know, um, there, I, I always think about this. And Jody, I don't know if you remember this, but we were doing a show where um, Steph, it, it was like a medieval theme. And there was like the, the um, I think Chloe, you were like a princess and there was, um, there was a throne room and Stefan and, and Robbie was disguised as this like, royal liege or something yeah, like yeah. that right um and he was sitting in the throne and he had you know he had like the crown and the tights and whatever and he had this scepter that you know like all lazy town props was sort of this gorgeously sculpted thing and it had at the end of the scepter was a ice cream cone like a triple scoop ice cream cone that like had the the ice cream was dripping it was just this sculpted thing it was gorgeous um and we were doing a scene where the mayor comes from one end of the throne room and walks the lane to the throne room to the throne where Robbie is sitting. And so I was at my starting position waiting to go on. They were, you know, setting up the lights and whatever. I was in the cart and, 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 and Stefan was sitting in the chair. And Jody, you were there and um, you were just kind of like hanging out on the floor next to me. And we just caught Stefan by himself. At, like no one was watching him. He wasn't on camera. He was just playing with the scepter, like it was dripping, you know, and he was doing these, like this whole little Chaplin-esque dance with it. Like, oh, I got to catch the ice cream, you know, that's dripping. It was beautiful. It was gorgeous. Nobody saw it. Um, we were lucky to have just happened to turn our heads and catch it. He didn't know we were watching. And it was just this wonderful little moment. And every day with Stefan had these, these little moments that just never, you know, that was just for him. Yeah, he yeah. always existed in that world of play. Like, yeah. I mean, the set was very much conducive to that because it was like, you know, mostly playgrounds and curved shapes and lots of colors and, you know, kids and Sporticus and all of that sort of stuff. But like, he was, he was definitely the engine for that. Like, cause he was always in that headspace of like creating and playing and trying new things and, and keeping the energy up. And I mean, I, like, I know that it, the, the show is main, mainly about Sporticus and, and, and all of that, but I, I really saw, I, I totally saw Stefan as, as a leader. I, I'm an informal leader in, in our group, even though he was the villain. He was like that villain that you loved to hate because you loved him so much off screen, you know, because he was just this incredibly generous and gifted human that you just wanted to be around all the time. And, and I remember, like, I think we all knew that and everyone that worked with him kind of saw that in him. 
because I remember that like Magnus when he would be directing like since Robbie a lot of his scenes were kind of like you said monologues Magnus would just kind of like let him like take it over how he thought because he was just such a genius and just like was Robbie like he was Robbie and like all those mannerisms were just like him being his funny goofy self and it came across like so well on camera and Magnus like we would all just be watching him like laughing like Mm -hmm. you're just a he was just so funny yeah I think in retrospect uh you know you talked about candles burning bright you know maybe too bright the wick gets burnt quick and uh, you know, Stefan, sometimes he'd be in the green room and he would tell us a story about when I was a pilot, da 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 da, or when I started wow. this um, nonprofit foundation and toured around the country, da 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 da. And it was just like, Stefan, how old are you? Like, yeah. how could you have done all this stuff? And at the time, I think he was, well, how old was he when we started? Wasn't he in his late 20s or something? Is that? Seems about right. Yeah, because yeah. he, was, he was about a year or two younger than me. Okay. So, I was like, so it just first. seemed remarkable that here this person who was in his 20s had had all these experiences and just lived so aggressively. And, you know, one of the things that, that sadly we find out is a lot of people who, who are taken too soon, uh, that is kind of the way that they live somehow, it, just by fate. I don't know what it is. Mm. Right. So Jody, one thing that uh, you missed out on was I asked everyone, how do you think Lazy Town would be affected by the COVID-19 pandemic? What do you think? <laughs> uh, well, Robbie would refuse to wear a mask. Oh, I never and, thought about that one. <laughs> and so he, and he's always, you know, lurking around. So he'd probably infect <laughs> everyone and we, all the character, the mayor would be totally inept at uh, putting together any sort of public health policy. And so I would say probably at least 10% of the population would be dead. Oh. And uh, Stingy, however, would survive uh, because he would be in complete isolation in his little house on top of the hill. And since Piggy is not a breathing creature who is capable of transmitting the virus, uh, the two of them would just keep each other company and one day peek out the window and see if anyone's moving around and maybe venture back out into society. And he and Piggy would repopulate Lazy Town. <laughs> yes, that, that would be a very dark adult That's version right. of Lazy Town for, the, for any of us who grew up with that. <laughs> Well, the problem is he couldn't even drive his car around because it has it can't be sealed shut. So oh. he, you know, so that wouldn't do any good for distancing. He would just have to uh, stay in his house. Mm. Um, but you know, he's got a lot of a lot of food stored in there, so mm. he'd be okay. He'd be okay. <laughs> I'm not nice. sure who would. Um... Yeah, and then the vaccine, uh, Stingy would have that as well. Yeah, the vaccine uh, is mine. <laughs> the, well, that's the problem is he wouldn't share it with anybody else. And so he's got tons of the vaccine, but he's not letting anybody else have any of it. Oh so that is a little bit of a tragedy because mm -hmm. he could have saved the town. You know? right. um, unfortunately, he hoarded Guys, it. Guys, I smell a spinoff. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> The stingy pig people, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we, we, we did that episode, uh, the Once Upon a right. Time, where they were all little pigs, you know, so we've already got, some, <laughs> you know, we already can see what the characters look like mm, they, right. with their little, with their little pig noses. Oh, wow. Mm. So before we wrap up, uh, somebody sent me a fan question, and it's for Chloe. Uh, my friend Holly Knight is asking, was the Stephanie wig itchy? Because she had the one from Toys R Us and it felt itchy. <laughs> um, well, I will start by saying the Stephanie wig was extremely, like each single strand of hair was like handmade. Like it was amazing. Mm -hmm. um, really thick at that. Um, it was like itchy, I think like any wig would be because I had to have my hair braided back into tight little braids pinned on top of my head like this and then stuffed into like a cap 
and then the wig, which was really thick and whatever. It was more so like warm, like a really thick winter hat almost, like always sweating rather than like really itchy. Um, but but just like the mix of like, oh, also, I don't know um, if like you guys on set remember this, but I would have to like glue it down to uh, the side of my head. So like the oh, wig right. could see like my sideburns. Mm -hmm. So it was really intricate. Um, definitely not comfortable, but not terrible either. Mm. David, is that wig you're wearing now itchy? <laughs> this is my own hair, Jody. Oh, oh, oh. I'm not as old as you. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I forgot, I forgot. <laughs> I feel like this is just a lazy town roast battle right now. Yeah, kinda. <laughs> oh, it hasn't started yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, guys, thank you so much for agreeing to come on Nostalgia Talk. Is there anything else you guys would like to say? Uh, thank you for having us. Bang, 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 it's bang, bang, so bang, nice bang, to see bang, these guys. I sing when I am dancing. Oh, oh, and <laughs> Chloe, do you do that like in your sleep? Do you dream about that song? Or? I don't, actually. Good. No. I do. Yeah. Well, to, well to, to wrap it up, normally I would say peace out to end, but... Uh, you guys want to do the Bing Bang dance or the song? Oh, <laughs> oops, oops. Yeah, look at, look at Jody. Um, <laughs> Sorry? I actually, wait. No, forget. forget. I'll, I'll, no, go ahead. No, I was going to ask Chloe a question. Uh -huh. It has nothing to do with Lazy Town. So <laughs> we'll forget. All right. <laughs> so uh, you, you guys want to do the song? Sure. I don't okay. think I know the actual words. I just I never make them up. the words. I would what? get out of there once they started playing the song. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll start us up and then maybe we'll see what we can remember. <laughs> you start us. You start okay. us. Ready? Go. go, James. Go. Go. Bing bang, digging on funny words I sing when I am dancing. Dancing, dancing, dancing. Bing bang, digging on silly words I mean anything. Get on up, it's time to dance. Yeah, it's so much fun being up on our feet. Being up on our feet. So, so we go, go up, 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 do the up, jump, do move it. around and clap your hands together. Gather, gather, gather. Down, down, turn uh -huh. around, having uh -huh. fun, it's what it's all about. Oh, very good. Hey, <laughs> Mayor Meanswell, you made it. Am I late? <laughs> Just a little bit. Yeah, we're wrapping up. Well, some say too early. Oh, oh hey, <laughs> my my Stephanie voice was just my my little ten year old voice. <laughs> nice. Is that crazy. Mm. Well, uh, see you next time on Nostalgia Talk. Peace. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you.